and I found a lighter and I started striking the clothes in the closet. Went down probably a couple of blocks and turned around and I was getting excited for seeing the house burning. Roland Nava was only eight when he set fire to his parents' home. Did out of anger. I wanted them to feel some kind of pain. His heroin addicted father beat him regularly. The abuse mixed with a drug infested neighborhood in Houston made it hard for Roland to imagine a happy life. And I would get whooped. My dad was of it. I would never amount to anything. I just felt so much hatred at that young age. Roland's only safe place was with his Christian grandmother. When I was with my grandma, I felt important. I felt like I was somebody because I was treated like somebody. She also took him to church and at times even anointed him with oil. But the abuse at home overshadowed any godly influence his grandmother had. On the streets and alone by 14, Roland would spend much of his life bitter and angry. Seeing how life was at that time, and it just hardened my heart. If I couldn't be happy, I didn't want nobody else to be happy. Theft, forgery, DUIs, and drug possession would fill his rap sheet for the next two decades. In that time, he married three times, had five kids, and was an enforcer for a notorious crime syndicate. Getting high, drinking, stealing. Their hands were up in the air while I was robbing them, and I felt that was power. I thought that's what a man was. Even then, Roland still visited his grandmother, his only reminder that there was some reason to have hope. No matter what I did, she always loved me. She was, I'm praying for you, mijo. That means son. When she passed away, I didn't go to her funeral. Didn't want to face the fact that the only positive person in my life was gone. There was nobody to turn to no more. Alone more now than ever, Roland was homeless, jobless, and hopeless. I felt worthless. I felt that that's what I was put on earth for, to suffer. Nobody knew that I ate out of a dumpster, that I slept in abandoned cars. I was tired of living. I was tired of just who I was. And I felt that there was nowhere else to go, so I slashed my wrist and my upper arm. His self-inflicted wounds healed. Then in 2006, after a high-speed chase, Roland would again land in prison for resisting arrest. As prisoner 01160789, Roland was known as the enforcer for a violent Latino gang. I was a part of an organization. If you weren't brown, you weren't going to be around. My job, I felt, was to lame, cripple, or eliminate every white man, black man, red, yellow, polka dot stripe. It didn't matter. While lying in his cell at the end of his year-long sentence, Roland heard a voice ask him a question. He told me why was I persecuting my brothers. When I heard that voice, I fell off the bunk. I couldn't see. They checked me. There was nothing wrong with my eyes. Three days later, my sight came back. After that, I just felt I was to study the Word of God. Roland quit the gang immediately. In response, four men ambushed, beat, and stabbed him. In the midst of the attack, Roland heard that voice again. I thought I was going to die in there because they were coming against me. When I heard God's voice, he said, when you get out of here, I want you to minister to the homeless, to those that are hungry, those in addiction, and those that are coming out of incarceration. I knew that I was going to get out of prison. That's when I knew God was real. Roland escaped with minor injuries and the very next week gave his life to Christ. And a radical transformation began. I could talk to another man of another race and not have hatred in him, not have hatred in my heart. 
to be friends with the ones that I was against. Upon his release in 2007, Roland would continue learning to put others and Christ first in his life. Today, he runs a ministry focused on helping poverty-stricken and formerly imprisoned individuals, and in 2019, was named Bastrop, Texas Man of the Year. He's back on the streets, but with a very different mission in mind. Today, I'm not robbing nobody. Today, my hands are up in the air because I'm praising God. That anger is gone. I am worth something, and I am somebody. Now, to me, a man is one who follows the Lord and has Jesus in his heart. To my grandmother, would be very pleased. <laughs>